Do you want to know the real reason why you're not seeing progress in the gym? Is it because you're not pushing yourself hard enough? Not eating right? Or maybe you're just plain lazy? Well, I'm gonna give you my advice from over 10 years in the health and fitness industry as to why you haven't been seeing progress and why you're currently stuck in a plateau. From the top of my head, the first thing that comes to mind is training intensity. It is so unbelievable to me how small of a percentage the gym population actually train intensely enough. In fact, over the last 10 years, and by the way, I've been coaching face-to-face -face as a PT and coach in a gym setting for like five years, so trust me, I know. I can comfortably and genuinely say less than 1% of people who go to the gym actually train intensely enough, actually train hard enough. And what exactly do I mean by hard enough, intense enough? I don't mean going into the gym and ego lifting. I don't mean going into the gym and lifting as much weight as you possibly can. I don't mean going to the gym and lifting weights that requires you to get a spotter. No, I mean going to the bloody gym and pushing yourself to technical failure in each and every single set. Not your first exercise and then you plateau. Each and every single set, from the start of your workout to the end of your workout. Don't come off of the set and just be like, oh, that was easy. If you are lifting again, or you're performing your next set within 60 seconds, that set was not hard enough. Sorry to tell you there, buddy. And also, going into the gym, and from week to week, you are consistently implementing the principles of progressive overload. So in some way, shape or form, just make sure you are progressing, whether that be in your technique, your form, your reps, your weights. Weights don't have to progress as fast. I'll get into that in a second. It can be your total volume, your time and attention, your tempo, and the list goes on just to name a few things. Now, when it comes to increasing the actual weight, prior to increasing the weight, make sure that your posture is correct, you're performing the full range of motion, and you have full stability and control of the exercise. Make sure that the weight itself, the exercise itself, is not in control of you. That's how you know it's time to increase weight. Another thing, when it comes to training intensity, something that ties hand in hand, is lack of focus, lack of consistency when you enter the gym. It's one thing to have a workout plan, but that workout plan becomes absolutely redundant if you cannot focus, if you have lack of focus and lack of consistency. If you're unable to train at the same time consistently from week to week, if you're unable to train the same time every single workout, if you're unable to have the same focus coming into every single workout, these are a handful of things that you're not thinking about that directly result in lack of results. Have a simple plan in place. It is not hard. Have a simple plan in place. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Ladies and gentlemen, it really is as simple as that. Ditch your bloody phone. Put your phone in airplane mode. Put your headphones in. Ditch your workout partner if you find that they're the reason why you're unable to focus, you're unable to have an effective workout. Ditch your bloody conversations with random people in the gym, maybe they're your mates, but at this given time, during the time that you are working out, that is your time to absolutely break yourself. Nothing else matters. If you want to see results and you want to see progress, then make sure that that hour that you are hitting the weights is equivalent to life or death. Literally, in some instances in the gym, it can be life or death if you aren't fully focused lifting heavy weights. So have that mindset from week to week, going into the gym from now on, and I guarantee you're gonna immediately see a benefit. In addition to that, let's talk about improper nutrition. Really, it is as simple as this. You go to the gym, you weight lift, you tear your muscle fibers. It is away from the gym, where you are fueling your muscles and repairing your muscles during recovery, I'll get into that in a second, that actually determines whether you lose weight, whether you gain weight, 
and whether you actually gain muscle. So let's say for the, like the majority of people, they go to the gym and then they just forget about everything else. Well, that's not how it works. I wish that's how it worked. But unfortunately, or fortunately for me anyway, away from the gym, you also have to put the same effort when it comes to your nutrition making sure that you're consuming enough protein in order to build muscle, making sure that you're consuming enough calories if you want to gain weight, making sure that you're staying in a caloric deficit if you want to lose weight, making better healthy choices when it comes to your overall nutrition, just smarter choices. For example, opting for whole foods instead of takeaway, lessening the amount of discretionary choices and junk foods and takeaway you have. Ah, the most dreadful one, Staying away from alcohol. There is nothing worse than alcohol when it comes to seeing progress in the gym. I have two whole videos on this topic right here, wherever it is, whichever corner it is, watch that video straight after this and you're gonna see the detrimental effects that alcohol has on our bodies, especially when it comes to health and fitness. Another one that you're not thinking about, no one thinks about this. Cheap dopamine. Lessen the amount, reduce the amount of cheap dopamine that you incorporate in your life. The less cheap dopamine you have, the better workout you are going to have. I guarantee this. I don't know if this is a scientific fact, but I'm just talking from experience. Trust me, I've been doing this crap for over 10 years. I've been coaching for over seven years. I might consider myself as an expert. You might consider me as an expert, whatever the bloody case may be. On this point, you gotta trust me. The more cheap dopamine you implement in your life, the more cheap dopamine avenues you take in your life, the more cheap avenue roads you go down, the less progress you are going to see. Now, this is because it's directly tied to the effort that you then put into your workouts, the effort that then you put into your nutrition, the total effort that you put into your overall health and fitness. If you instead turn health and fitness into the main pillar of your life, into the main pillar of dopamine, reducing the amount of cheap dopamine, turning your personal bests, your progress, your results that you obtain in the gym, as your dopamine hit that you receive, then I guarantee you that you will see the most amount of results that you will ever see, minus the first 12 months of newbie gains in the gym, that you'll ever see in your life. This is how you accelerate your growth. If you're not properly implementing nutrition, like for example, if your calories aren't correct in whichever path you want to go, whether that be fat loss or muscle gain, then this doesn't matter. Dopamine here doesn't matter. Because ultimately what's gonna allow you to gain or lose weight is your caloric intake. So caloric intake first, prior to this dopamine trick that I've just explained. Another one from the top of my head and something that I consistently see all the time is lack of accountability. You don't have any source of accountability, any social network, anything to keep yourself accountable. Something easy to keep yourself accountable is short and long-term goal setting. That also falls into having clear goals. So people don't have clear goals, they lack clear goals, they lack accountability. These two can go hand in hand. That's something I highly recommend you implement in order to see results faster. This also can tie into laziness, excuses. When you don't have clear goals, you don't have accountability, you become lazy. You, be, you have endless excuses. The amount of excuses that I've received from clients is unfathomable. The amount of U-turns and the amount of like ways I've had to navigate these excuses just to like go back to where like their why, if that makes sense. So they come up with these random fabricated excuses to where I then have to rebuttal to remind them why they started, remind them of their why, remind them of their goals. That consistency is the key to you know achieving their goals in the both short and long term. Let's rephrase because I've jumbled words there. Lack of accountability. Lack of clear goals equals more excuses, more laziness equals less results. Simples. Then we also have just making sure you understand the basics when it comes to exercise and nutrition. Understanding 
why you are doing what you're doing. The basics of calories in versus calories out, the basics of macronutrients, what you need, what you don't need, what's a fad diet, what's not a fad diet, what's an industry myth versus not a myth. You can find all the answers on my channel. I have endless videos on these topics, but having the basics of education in anything in life, whether that be video editing, YouTube, whether that be the job you're working at, you're obviously gonna be ahead of 90% of people if you can just understand 10% of what you're doing. That's the premise of what I'm trying to get to and therefore, you're gonna see more results. Finally, I'll just wrap up the video here. Either overtraining or undertraining. You're either gonna fall into one of these two categories. I hope you don't, but I would classify undertraining as less than three days in the gym per week, not weightlifting, not resistance training, and more than five weightlifting resistance training sessions per week. If you are between three and five, then you are perfecto. If you are over five and you are under three, then you are either under training or over training. Thus, you're significantly affecting the results that you would be getting. You might be thinking, ah, oh, how can it be possible that if I'm training more, I'm getting less results? Well, there's something called the super compensation curve. Long story short, if you're not bothered searching that term up, just understand that when you train in the gym, as I previously mentioned, your muscle fibers are torn. Thus, they are already cooked. So if you put them back in the oven, they're gonna get burnt. Therefore, you're gonna see less progress in the gym and you're doing more harm than good by retraining that muscle group. So if you have a very solid workout plan, that workout plan would most likely cater for a three-day workout plan, a four-day workout plan, or a five-day workout plan. All of these options are viable, but each of these plans would guarantee that by the end of the week, you have absolutely obliterated each of your muscle groups. Therefore, not giving you enough time in between to train a sixth or seventh day. Now, you can of course do cardio, but you must take full rest days away from the gym to minimum in order to allow your muscles to fully recover before coming back and demolishing them again the next week and the next week and the next week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope that clarifies the real reason as to why you are not seeing results in the gym. One of these might apply to you. All of these might apply to you, but start making the changes. There's no excuses. Begin making the changes starting today, starting tomorrow, and I guarantee you'll start seeing more results in the gym. If you learned something from today's video, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, comment below what you would like to see next, and if you'd like to debate me down in the comment section, feel free to. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.